to go. All right. Welcome, guys. I'm so excited y'all are here. And um, shout out to all the people on live. We've got live and in person today. So we'll be going back and forth, um, making sure everybody's got any questions and everything they need taken care of. My name's Allison. This is Kobe. He is our model for our pet head today. Um, we're going to... We're gonna groom his face and make him all beautiful and talk about all the little tricks and tips to try to get that face really nice and round for you. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I like to get start, get to it. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna start with setting his head with a guard comb. Uh, I've got my 30 wide on, and I think I'm gonna start with my, oh, just to just make sure I like that. I always like to start a little longer in case I change my mind, then I'll, I'll drop down one if I need to. Um, what? You ready, buddy? He's been waiting all morning. He's ready. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to just start kind of back where his occiput is back here and come straight forward um, right, towards, right towards his nose and in between his ears. I don't want to catch that ear hair. So I think it would, uh, would be really nice for him. He comes on about a four-week schedule, so that was his last his last haircut. So that's not taking tons off of him, but we'll scissor it up nice too. Kind of my rule of thumb is I like to go like two lengths longer for the top of the head for whatever I do on the body. So I know we're not doing the body today, but um, I do typically use like a two comb um, for his body or like a five. We kind of go back and forth, so I feel like this. Oh, it gives his head a really nice length, and then I can kind of scissor in anything else, like visor, all of that stuff, um, once I've got that top of that set, which we're going to do right now. What do I want on these? Okay. So, I'm going to clean out the corner of his eyes first, and I've just got my Ohana um, fluffer. This is just the straight. And I'm going to just come in here and trim out the corner of his eyes. I like to stay really close to the stop. I don't want to come across the nose bridge and trim any of this hair because that's going to give him that like slapped in the face look. I definitely don't want to go up into his visor because that's also going to give him that like slapped in the head kind of look. We really want to make everything nice and polished around. So we want to try and stay really tight to his eyes. And you'll notice that be a trend in all of our um, demos today. And I just want to double check, is everybody able to hear me really well on live and in person? Okay, in person's good. Do we have any like thumbs up in the live chat that we can all hear well? I can speak louder. Sometimes it's a little fun. Cool, sweet. All right. So we got his eye corners cleaned out. And I'm gonna comb this forward. And I'm going to trim his visor with my Como 8 curves. Um, I kind of treat this almost like a rainbow on my curlier, fluffier, like mixed coat breeds. So I'm going to kind of come from where my like knuckle of my thumb is all the way over to the other side here. I don't really want to go into the side of their um, like cheek coat. I want to just kind of stay up and down because I do want to leave this enough to give me a nice full muzzle um, and give it more of an expression and not just like cutting into the side coat there. So I'm going to kind of go straight up and down here. And I'm going to do that in the same direction on both sides. I think one of the biggest things with um, faces is doing almost the opposite on one side. So a lot of people will go like all the way over and the way you're cutting the hair is going to make one side of the face always look a little bit different than the other side of the face. So if you can keep your angles the same on both sides, so if you're going up over here, go up over here, it'll make that lay of coat be the exact same on both sides. So you're not having the issue of where the coat falls. It got cut differently on one side than the other side. So if you keep everything the same direction, you'll have a much nicer finish on an equal face. Um, once I trim up that visor, I'll kind of pull anything up on the top of his head here. And we've got like a little ridge, so I just like to scissor that up. And 
nothing too crazy. Kobe is a good boy. And then since we took that guard comb from like the occiput back, if this body was trimmed, it would be pretty, pretty short compared to the top of our head. So I like to leave a little bit to be able to blend in with my shears in the back of this here. So I always blend this in, even um, might make it with some blenders. These are the brand new Dropping Today Akira 50 Curves. So they've got um, 50 teeth. They are so smooth. It is ridiculous. We were playing around with them earlier today for the first time. Absolutely incredibly soft, giving it a really soft finish. And you could really, I'm going to use these for probably most of the muzzle up here. I would say one of the biggest things that um, is kind of like, in my opinion, old school, where everyone will pull this muzzle coat down and they'll pull it down on every single braid and then they'll trim your beard with it down, on, especially on these more curly coated dogs, mixed coat dogs. I like to try and pull it up and fan it out around this muzzle so it gives you more of that like almost Asian fusion-esque like rounded muzzle illusion and it almost brings it into the hair on your like cheeks on the sides here and then you'll notice that it really matches like the length of these shears really well so I know I'm not going too much or too far because my muzzle is going to match and flow right to the back of my ear. So I almost have a nice little, nice little C shape here. And then same on this side. I'm going to move because again, we want to always try to make sure we stay in the same direction. So I don't want to come this way on this side. I want to come and go this way on this side. So I'll do this side first. And do we have any um, in-person questions so far over anything? All right. Hey, that means I'm doing a good job. <laughs> Any online questions? <laughs> Take that as a no. And I like to make sure I'm getting that all the way up to the back of this ear. Um, all this little random little ear fluff. It's not really like body coat. It's not really ear coat. It's not really head coat. Like, I don't know what it is, but it can go. We don't need <laughs> it. Get that out of there. It makes our life harder. So then we're going to do the exact same thing over here. The reason you want to really make sure we're trying to keep everything going in the same direction, hair has memory, so it's going to remember if you've always trimmed it the other direction, like if you've always gone backwards and kind of grew from one side. It is definitely harder to flip the scissors in your hand and try to go from this other direction, and it takes some getting used to. Um, and there are definitely times when I don't, like I just can't, like the angle, the dog's moving too much, like whatever it may be, I can't make it work. Um, but the more that you can try to keep things going the same way, that hair is going to cooperate the same on both sides, you know, unless you've got a cowlick or something. So your face is, like one side of the face should match better than the other side. I feel like that was a big, um, like issue for me when I was trying to figure it out. Like I was like, why is like this side look droopy and this side look happy? And it's literally because my shears are going opposite directions on both sides. Um, you've got your, the sides of your muzzle matching that nicely. I'm going to take this chin really short. It's probably my favorite thing to do <laughs> is to take every bit of hair off of this I can. Sometimes I'll shave it with a backwards four, which I actually, I did stick that over here. Let me grab that. So, so I've just got my four blade on. And you can almost see where I've probably done it before. It's almost like a poodle V. And then you'll just bring that all the way up. You want to stay underneath your lip line. And 
And then by bringing it down to a point in here, it's gonna really help um, blend in your neck for whatever length your body coat is. And I will do this on pretty much every single dog um, because taking off this little section right here on your pets are gonna give your head to be in a more pronounced area and it won't look like the head of your dog is still attached to like all this like neck build up down here. Um, I feel like I see that a lot. And you can just take this a little tighter and if it's something you know you don't think the parents will like, you think they might comment on, just go, like, just make it a subtle difference. You know, if you're doing the body with a five, maybe do that with a seven. Like, you need to just make it very subtle. Now, if it's a seven all over, obviously, there's no need to do that. But if you've got, if you're going into your, like, two combs, one combs, O oh combs, um, you can just drop that down a comb and kind of work your way and make this area a little shorter, a little shorter, a little shorter. <laughs> and eventually, they're not going to notice, but it really gives that, um, head more of a pronounced position so that it looks like it's on top of the dog and the dog's proud and standing tall um, and not like slunched together like all on its neck real tight. It's the little things that will separate your um, pet grooms from the one up the street. So little tiny tips and tricks that will um, elevate it higher and the pet owner might not even ever notice that something as simple as that is different. Um, some will, they're picky, but others might not. And those are gonna be the things that set you apart. So those little things are very, 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 very important. Um, once you trim up that area, I'm gonna hit this back with my new Akira 50s. And just blend that in real nice. And I'm going to fan out this muzzle hair best I can. And then I'm going to ever so slightly cut into it, which is like dun dun dun. But it's going to make it stand up and give you that rounded, more Asian fusion styled mm -hmm. muzzle, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be right in par with your like teddy bear trims and like all those little like the pictures that all these parents see on Instagram and you're like I know a groomer owns that dog <laughs> <laughs> you're like I can't accomplish that on your little dog but like we can get pretty close all right we can get pretty pretty close um I've got some really incredible uh pets that look very much teddy bear like and um you know, some of it is changing things slowly over time, um, getting the owner to understand what it takes to accomplish that haircut if they really want it, um, and making sure we're on the same team with trying to accomplish that. You know, no, no self-grooming at home. Absolutely do not mess with the hair that I'm trying to groom <laughs> for you. And it sounds awful, but like, you really are kind of trimming the hair over the nose bridge when you're kind of creating this little nice pet muzzle um, look. So it's like just long enough to not stick straight up in the air, but short enough to still make it nice and rounded. So as it grows in, it's still not gonna stick like straight up. It's gonna just become part of this muzzle coat. And that can take time depending on where the dog's face is. You know, if you're grooming them for the first, second time, sometimes these are things that you have to grow into on the pet. Um, and I would tell them that. I was like, you know, this is the goal, but like it's gonna take a couple grooms to get there. So that way they know and you know the end result is you're all on the same page. Any questions over that so far? In person or online? No? The last thing I taught, no one asked me a dang question. <laughs> I was like, I guess I'm doing a good job explaining it. Kobe's a real, he's gonna be our fastest one today. He's our, our easy peasy guy. <laughs> and I just like to triple check everything, go back over, pull everything out. You know, you can never um, comb something too much. Just to go back over, even where I'm holding, I can pull out some more hair. Why are you smelling? He's like, 
there's a charcuterie board over there, and <laughs> no one's giving me a snack the entire time I've been here. <laughs> I think we're, let me grab this little hair behind your ear over here. That same, like, no man's land crud. dance for everybody? He's like, oh, I'm too nervous. There's a lot of people here. He <laughs> likes to jump up and down and do the little Paul thing. Uh -huh. You know? And then you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do it for him, Kobe? Come on, baby. Yeah. He's a professional. You're a paid actor. Alright. Ears. Who hates them as much as I do? Great. <laughs> they're awful. That's why I own two B-shots. Okay. <laughs> so... Literally hate them the bane of my existence. Everyone's like, what's your biggest trick on ears? I don't really have one. I'm gonna be straight up. The best thing that I've ever accomplished for ears are just trimming the very bottoms of them and trying to leave the rest as even as I can. I hate them, they're awful. Um, as long as I'm keeping that guard comb right in the middle, it seems to feather this down really nicely, especially on dogs with this type of coat. Um, the very like very straight 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 edged ears i think personal preference if you like it great if your clients like it even better um <laughs> you know that's our that's our goal i prefer more of a rounded little bell look on the bottom and i try to make sure i'm holding their ears up and then i will let them readjust and hold them in their natural position and then almost groom them twice so that way i know how they're going to look when they like raise their ears and they're excited and they're happy to like go home and see their parents. And I know how they're gonna look when they're just at home chilling on the couch. So I feel like there's two totally different things. If you only groom them in a natural position, they could look totally different once the dog's ears are perked up um, in motion. And we wanna make sure they're looking good all the time. You've got stray hairs that pop out, it happens. So I'm gonna start with them up and try to make sure I'm pulling all of it down and then I'm just going to come in with my Akira 50 and just take off this bottom. And honestly, it's literally the shape of this curved angle is what I'm going for. And then I'm going to do the same over here. When you start cutting into all this coat is when things start to come off. So if I can leave it, uh, then I know I'm going to end up with less, less problems. If I ever accidentally cut up into this, um, it always looks the wor way worse the next time the dog comes in. Like it just doesn't grow in well. Um, and that's an uphill battle because I'm either stuck just having to leave it look like crud mm -hmm. until it grows in and just explaining to them like, hey, just, I gotta leave it alone until it like, <laughs> until it grows back down and like matches. Um, or I just do it every single time and then you're stuck in that motion for literally ever. Mm -hmm. So I try my best to leave it so I don't get stuck in that motion. Ooh, see, something caught your attention. <laughs> and then of course, it's easier to see if they're level, like if they're both equal with their ears perked up. And use the loop to your advantage. Um, you know, you can move their, move their head around. It, it's taut but not tight, so there's still lots of slack, but I still have full control of the dog. So we still want to um, 
have control, but make sure they're comfortable. You know, if they've got way too much slack, then you're not really in control of the groom and the dog's doing circles all over the table and they're not cooperating and you can't really groom a dog when they aren't cooperating with you very well. I mean, you can, but we all know how that turns out. <laughs> all right. Are we even? Probably not because ears, right? <laughs> all right. So I'm going to just leave them down and see what they look like with them down. And then tidy this up if I need to. But I mean, it is just a versus light. If you find, like, I have a couple little hairs up here where my guard comb has caught it in the past, and now it needs to grow. If that drives you insane like it does me, I'll just pick it up with my hands, and then I'll blend down into the ear coat with it. So I don't want to come up into it because this is going to create volume and so next time it's going to be even more of a flyaway like it's going to really stand up i want to try and blend it down into this ear and i always have some you know i'm in a hurry i'm behind i'm zipping that guard comb over the top of the head i cut a little piece of the ear coat no biggie See a little ridge on your muzzle right here, buddy. How are we doing, guys? We alive? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't believe you at all. <laughs> not but one, not one bit. Look at you! Now, I don't know if he'll let me because I don't typically do it on all my pets. I don't think I do it on him. But one of my favorite things that I think really polishes up the face on different breeds is shaving the little nose. And I will do that as actually part of your Bichon trim when I do that later. Um, but you can do it on your pets, which will grab all of this fun, gunky lip hair that like we love so much. Um, now, if you're not sure if the dog's gonna cooperate with that, it's a very loud noise, really close to their face, it moves. Always turn it on and just use the back and see how they're gonna react. He doesn't really care, so we're going to do it. He's not He's not freaking <laughs> out. He's like, uh, please stop. But we're going to keep going. I do have this on a 40, and you want to go right from, like, nostril to, like, bottom lip, nostril to bottom lip. So we're creating, like, a little triangle. Um, this is kind of something I've picked up from my little beach on room that I just think really clean up the lip line on pets, and they can really polish that face. Like, I, sometimes I see pictures, and the dog's face looks so good, and then you have this, like, wad of discolored lip hair that's just, like, yeah. so gross. Um, so if you can get the dog to tolerate shaving that off, it'll really, really polish up that, that look. And not every dog's going to tolerate this, so, you know, if not, it's no biggie. But if so, that is just one more thing that completely changes the look of the face and takes two seconds if they tolerate it. And I feel like, like your Shih Tzu's, your um, like Lhasa's, Maltese, like dogs like that, I feel like they look so cute if you can get that lip line shade. Um, but I also feel like they have the grossest little lip where they're just they're a little bit more smushy, then <laughs> they've got more crud in here. So if I can clean that out, then I always know um, my face looks more polished and finished as an overall groom, because your faces are the most important thing. Um, they're the very first thing that the owner sees, they're the very first thing that an owner will have a complaint about. Um, so you, as far as your groom goes, if you're gonna spend extra time on something, definitely, in my opinion, put that on the head. Um, sometimes you can get away with having little like hairs on a place here and there, but if your head is like banging, they're probably not gonna say much. So I always um, will dedicate more time if I've got it to just polishing those faces, making sure that they're exactly how I want them, they're exactly how I want the owner to see them. Um, that way, we all feel like we won. I got done pretty fast and it got home and I got paid. <laughs> and the owner <laughs> is thrilled. They have a really cute dog because they're like, they don't pay attention to everything, but I feel like they definitely do with faces. So. Any questions? I have a question that's Absolutely. a little bit different. 
Um, you said the smooch face, and it kind of reminded me of, I had this dog the other day, and it was a shih tzu, and it had the wrinkles mm -hmm. in its eyes right here. Like, what do you do to make that look good? Yeah, so I'm going to repeat the question just to make sure our live heard it. So the question is just kind of the wrinkly crud in the like stop area in between mm -hmm. the eyes on your like shih tzus and your little smush face breeds. A lot of the times, my best bet is to shave that out if they'll let you do it. <laughs> to fighting battle because mm -hmm. sometimes they're not going to. A lot of times what I'll tell my owners is like grab an electric toothbrush and like please put that on your dog's face. Like, try to desensitize your dog to letting us use our tools and our equipment. Um, I forgot who it was that told me, but they were like, tell them to take a spoon and just kind of hold it near their face and around. Just having the metal and it being shiny and kind of cold, maybe emulating our scissors a little bit, but that's a safer object for a pet parent at home with a crazy wild puppy to be all up in their face um, will help in the future of trying to clean that out. Now, if they're really, really awful for it, there's only so much you can do. My, my absolute favorite thing with this is just shaving out the corner of those eyes like a 30 um, and then making sure I'm getting it really nice and clean and then again just educating the owners on if I can have them help desensitize the dog using an electric toothbrush or anything like that so that way we can all they can get the look they want and get the crud out of their dog's eyes and I can also get this I can get it accomplished for them so you've got to really I think um, talk with your clients. They really gotta be a part of your team to accomplish what you need for their dog. And I try to explain that to everybody is I'm on your team, like your dog is my top priority. I wanna make sure that I have everything accomplished for you. But you gotta you got also be on my team. This is a partnership, you have to help me out. So if I'm telling you that like, I need you to do this, you've gotta help me out or I can't, I can only do so much, like you're tying my hands. So um, I have a big sheet of paper that I give to all my clients. If I have a new client that kind of explains everything that I expect from them um, and that way we can have the best relationship and that I can take care of their dogs and that way all my clients act like this and they all respect me, I respect them, they respect my time and then they all get a beautiful dog that goes home and we all have a great time. <laughs> so we're all having a good day at the end. Right Kobe? Are we going to dance for us? Oh thank you. Thank you. That was right on my glasses. <laughs> yes it was. That was a really good question. Any other in-person questions? Yeah, I think that's what comes into play. I'll be repeat the question, sorry, for live, is when you have dogs with ears that, you know, one might stick up kind of like sideways, one lays white, like you've got kind of funky ears going on, how do we go about like trimming those? I think what plays into that is making sure that you're trimming them like, like taut, like where you have them erect, and then letting them be relaxed and then trimming them that way again. They're never really ever going to match. Um, but doing them both ways, you're going to have a better chance of knowing at least it looks this way when they're relaxed, it looks this way when they're excited. So you can get something pretty similar. Um, ultimately, dog's anatomy is definitely going to affect the groom, what you can do. We can't change that. Um, but I think doing the ears both ways is going to help it look all around. That way you know exactly how it's going to look. So yeah, great question. Any other in-person questions? Don't be scared. I don't bite. Yes. So when you're doing the reverse O comb or whatever attachment, and you, you say you go just completely straight forward, like you don't go from the opposite foot down to like sideways, right? Okay, so great question. For live, I'm going to repeat that for you all. When I take the O comb over the top of the edge, she's asking if I just go like straight forward and not kind of veering off to the sides. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I think it kind of depends on the breed and where their ear sets sit, if that makes sense. If they've got like these super crazy fluffy ears, then I try to avoid it and stay like right here in the middle because I don't want to grab ear coat by accident. Now, if we've got like shaved ears or something, man, I'm busting off as much as hair as I can <laughs> with that guard comb because I know it's going to be less work for me in the long run. Um, I will though try and stop like mm, muzzle length, like this little section right here. Like I'll, I'll, I'll snag that with a guard comb. Um, but I think that too also plays into what shape face am I going for? If I'm going, he's kind of got little tight, nice little ovally head that fits his muzzle. If you're going for like super round like Bichon, you'd never want to do that. You're, so it's going to play into the exact breed that you're doing, the dog, the way the ears are groomed, if they're shaved, if they're fluffy. 
Um, your absolute safest bet is to just stay in the middle, and that's guaranteed. You're never going to have an issue, depend, like regardless of the breed. Depending on those factors, you may be able to seep into the sides, but I still try to stay like away from the ears. And anytime I do that, if I'm like in a hurry, man, I always catch that ear hair, like always. It makes me so mad because now I've got to <laughs> grow it out and blend it and it looks awful and I just wasted more of my time because now I'm scissoring this dang ear for 20 minutes trying to make it look good. So <laughs> my probably best recommendation is if you stay in the middle, you're in the clear. <laughs> really great question. Is there any online questions? Nothing? Online. Look at that. All right. You know, online's quiet today. Sorry. Right. Good sometimes. <laughs> Quiet's good. Uh, oh, we oh, got, oh, oh, we got, I got a question. Okay. What's the best way to trim the visor with deep set eyes to make them look open but not cut into the face shape? Oh, that's a really good question. So I'll repeat it one more time for everybody. The best way to trim the visor when the eyes are really deep set, that way you're not making them kind of look like slapped in the face and you don't leave too much of a hood over the visor. Um, what you're going to actually kind of want to do is you'll find this on a lot of your larger doodles, which might be kind of what that question's hinting at. Um, you'll want to be trimming the very like corner of this eye closer. So you'll want to like leave your visor, I would say like normal length, but as you come in here, you'll want to like make this tight in the corner here. So that way it kind of opens up your face, but still leaves your visor, so you've still got like a nice little head, and you're not like taking all the soft hair out. You don't have like a slapped in the head look, like where you're taking all the visor hair off. We're gonna be like right here trimming this really tight into the corner of the eye and bringing this further back into your face instead of more up, up and down. You're gonna bringing it more into the side of the face, if that makes sense for everybody. Really, really great question. So let me trim a little side a little bit because I. <laughs> Did it over there. Sweet. We, get on, we got on questions? I sounded real Kentucky right there. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we'll switch out. Christy's going to be up next with her Westie. So I think is it a like a touch of a break if you only go to the bathroom, do all that kind of jazz, and uh, we'll be right back.
Hey, thanks for coming back and joining us. My name is Christy. This is my um, demo dog, Tucker, today. <laughs> a little technical difficulty there. Um, and I just want to make um, give a good shout out to our sponsors today. We have awesome giveaways from Alpha, Jelly Pet, um, Paul Mats, Botanica, um, and Fresh, of course. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so my name is Christy and this is Tucker and we're going to be going over his head and um, we're going to give that kind of round westy head. It's a chrysanthemum shaped head and um, so we're going <laughs> to, where are you going? We're going to talk about his head right now, the head shape and things, um, the correct uh, look that you want for this breed. So a chrysanthemum is a flower and you don't want to think of round circle like Bashan head. You want to think of more PC, kind of like wild kind of head. Um, I've seen a lot of dogs are more over scissored and it looks too crisp. So I use a lot of like thinning shears, chunkers, um, kind of curved um, fluffers on his head. So I'm going to scissor his head completely. Um, I know it does take a lot of time in the salon, but um, once you get fast with it, you can probably get the head down in like 10 minutes. Um, so with the Westy head, since he's turned this way, you can feel he has a little ocelot back here. And then if you want your fingers, you can feel it right behind the ear bones and right underneath the chin. So all of that is the head piece. We're not here to blend the head into the body. We're here to make it pop out. We want the dog to look like it's going to go right into the hole to get that crack. So they're supposed to, supposed to look like happy and jaunty. Um, they have to have any like brow, so they need to have um, a nice heavy brow so their eyes are deep set and they can see through that um, brow. Uh, their heads, they're supposed to have some substance here, and he doesn't have really any substance. It's pretty flat. He has like pretty, um, he has no stop right here. So we're going to try to make an illusion that he has more hair up here, or more head up here, and um, give him more of a, a show look. So. Uh, with that being said, I wish there was more hair underneath here. Um, I like to have more hair here because sometimes when you cut too much in here, you're going to get more of a triangle head. So if this is fuller, you can really get that round head. Any questions about the head here or online? Okay. So when setting the head, I like to set the ear tips first. And ear tips with a pet dog, uh, you can go, if you want a shorter head, you can go a little bit more, expose more of the ear. Um, if you want a bigger head, less the ear. But for the show, it needs to be a circle with two triangles popping out of the head. So usually like a quarter of the ear tip, just enough to see that little triangle um, ear tip popping out of that round chrysanthemum head. Questions? Oh, okay. Uh, with, so with the ear tips, I would start with that, and that will set your line for the circle. So we'll do the ear tips just to get those out of the way, and then we'll go on the eyes, and then we're going to set the whole circle of the head. Um, I like to use a ten blade, and the reason I like to use a ten blade is it leaves a little, about, a little bit of a um, fluff on the edge of the ear, and you can really create an illusion. Uh, with your ear tips and you have enough to scissor. So if sometimes their ears are shaped wonky, so if they're wide, if the ears are pointing out this way, you can scissor them a little bit more so the ears are actually like more upright. Mm -hmm. um, you can make them look like the um, ears are pointing inward. So it kind of gives you the illusion that the head, ears aren't wide set. Um, his ear are up, they're a little close. I mean, he doesn't have much substance to his head. It's very, um, they're supposed to be more wedge shaped. So more like this instead of like this. Like I, I feel like he's more of a Scotty shaped head um, than, yeah, you're just a pet. You're such a cool boy. So with the, um, the ten blade, <laughs> I'm going to start with the back. And I'm going to hold the ear like between my um, thumb and index finger. And then I'm going to have the rest of my fingers to hold it in place. So I can just put some pressure on that. And I'm not like digging down. I'm just setting it flat like this. If you like dig down like this, you can create like a big chop like mark in there. And then, 
for this week. Hopefully. <laughs> and same with the plant. Use your fingers as a, as a backdrop to, to protect that ear. I've seen um, people use like 30 blades on the ears, and I hate that because it looks like her, it's like bat wings to me. You know, like I like to have an ear that looks like it has substance. It's like good <laughs> thick leather, um, not like little bat wings. Okay. Any questions about clipping the ear tire? From there, I'll take some strings. <laughs> Any questions online um, about ear tips? Nope. So, for example, here he has uh, he has a little bit of a uh, you can see, especially when you okay. So when you dry dogs, you can see sometimes they have that little like fluff around their ear leather. So that's why I try to like to leave, and I can scissor that. And from here, I like to pull out with my fingertips, and like I feel with my fingertips where the edge of the ear is. So it has to worry about cutting the ear, like, it's like that's your, that's your safety net, that's your guard right there. And then right to there, and I just top it straight so it's nice and tight. Pull it to the side, and I find where the ear edge is. And I still have room to play, like I see like how his ear looks. It looks like it's pointing up that way right now, you see that? I'm gonna pull it off to the side, find where the ear tip is. I'm gonna make it go a little bit more this way. See that angle just changed the ear shape. Oh, I'm sorry, I woke you up from your nap. Oh, hot and heavy. And then you want to pull the ears together and see, like, this ear is too much in this way, so I'm going to pull it this way a little bit and then try to make the ear tip point go out a little bit more. So it's like that. Okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, I always scissor in between the stop because it gives a more natural look. If your client's like, oh, really like, I want it to be more like eyes open, I won't go any more shorter than like a four blade. Uh, you don't want to see skin there. And it like, it protects their eyes. They have a little bit of hair in front of their eyes because um, these guys like to go in anything and everything, bushes and stuff like that going to the ground. Um, so that hair is there for their protection. And, um, since they're ratters too, this is why they have such a big hair on their head because those rats try to turn around and bite the dog and it grabs onto the hair and not their mouth. If you've ever seen a Westie like attack a rat, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they sit there like, shh. Okay. So I would actually like a little bit more fill here. But I'm gonna go with the 36 double tooth. Um, it's nice because they have teeth on both sides and they leave a really natural finish. And that's what we want. And I also like to like put my finger underneath the grooming loop, especially if they're moving their head a lot. And I'll let their chin just rest in my hand. They're usually more comfortable that way than sitting like grabbing on the chin. They're just like, you know, like a little bobble head. I'm sorry. And from there, Sometimes you can put your, your thumb on there just lightly. I'm like, I'm not pulling his head like really tight just to make him more comfortable. And it's going to be like a diamond shape right in here, but like a fan. I'm not going to take out too much because he doesn't have much there, but I'm trying to create that stop right there. So he looks like he has more substance on the top of his head. Any questions about that? Nope. And another thing that I like to do on Westies, it's like, if you think of like a schnauzer, I like to cut in, like on the outside of the eyes to like open up so they can see from the outside. So once I start doing that, my clients stopped 
asking me to trim the eyes shorter and shorter because they can see more. He's like, my dogs can't see. So once I start opening that up, um, I haven't had people ask me to trim the eyes shorter. So, you know, like that gets really annoying. Like you don't want to trim the dog's head back and they're just like surprise coming <laughs> in. <laughs> So I like to take the, um, the 36 double tooth and I like to create the layers because when you have like the shorter layer, shorter hairs, it, it holds up the longer hair. So it creates like a nice like bevel without like using like a curved shear to create like a Bichon bubble. So I'll just go right in the corner eye and just take some snips. The more natural it looks, the better. You see the difference? Like how open it is up here compared to this one? Because it like almost makes them look happier too, because if you leave all that droopy hair, they look sad. And they're supposed to be a happy, jaunty type of dog. So I'm gonna do the other side. And then from there, I'll comb like a little bit, I'll, like I start layering, layering the hair. And I'll go short and then try to make like, like a nice um, brow. They're not eyebrows, it's like a unibrow. <laughs> I, I know, holding your hair on your chin, he didn't like that. Instead of like fighting with the dog, like just find what, what they're happy with because he likes it more like this. I'm like, I'm not really like pinching, I'm just like kind of like, almost sometimes if you like push on the dog like this, mm -hmm. I feel a little bit more happier that way. Are you nervous for the live? It's okay, it's usually It's usually It's okay, you're just okay. Don't touch it, on me. So now it's nice and open, they can see, they can see from the side. And that's why I like to start with that piece because that piece is like the first thing that the owners see. It's like, oh, look at their face, it's so cute. Um, any questions on setting the eyes before we move on to any other part of the head? Or do you have any Westy questions in general? Are you trying to blend the corner of the eyes into the rest of his head or just into where? I'm just like opening it up right there. Okay. Like it looks blended because it's the double okay. tooth thinning shears. Like if I just took um, a straight, you will see it. Sure. Yeah, it's blended, but I'm I'm opening this up. Okay. Um, once we scissor this, um, it will look definitely a lot more blended. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Also, the question was like, <laughs> am I just am I just cutting it here, or am I blending in the head? It's kind of like both. Answers like yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I do scissor the whole head. Like, I I try to do um, clipper combs, and only if the dog's like super short and they want a super short head, I'll do clipper comb. But sometimes they have these weird shaped heads, like the in, indents right here, and my taking the clipper comb over, it's just, it doesn't lay nice. It just makes you have like, like a weird mohawk, and then like kind of like sunk in, like almost like, I don't know, banana head. And um, by layering the hair, it'll make it look natural and it'll stand out more. Hi, I know, <laughs> it's okay. And by lifting it up, I'm gonna do like almost like when you cut, people cut hair kind of thing. So it, it's, it feels funny at first, but once you get used to it, it's, you can get faster with it. So with the ears, I like, we, we set point A and point B. And that's our starter for a circle. So anything that's above that line goes. So we're gonna try to imagine a circle around the head with this being the line right here. Any questions about that? This is my madness to my Westy head. <laughs> so I like to comb all this up in my fingers. So it's all held in like this. I grab the tip of the ear so it's out of the way, like that. And then I get my Ohana curves. And 
and I start, this is the beginning of my circle. This is how I do my show dogs too. Like they get stripped and then I go over with um, finish shears. And then from there, the front, you fold it backwards to get that front. So that triangle, when I lift that little ear tip up, that's the only thing you see that's poking out of that circle. Like that. Like that. Any questions? Make sense? Okay. You guys can see? <laughs> okay. I'm trying to like, can the, um, can they see online pretty good? Yeah. Okay, so the same thing on this side. I'm lifting it all up. Like this, like this is super, super long. So I'm gonna fold that ear tip forward. And that's my circle. This is gonna be point B. We're basically basically creating like quarter circles around the head and connecting them. And then I will put that ear tip back. So you want to protect it, not to trim it. And then that ear tip is out. Once I do that, I lift everything up in between the head and connect point A to point B. We have an online question. Yes, online question. Yes, um, are you grabbing the hair on the face in front of the ear also? Yes, everything from the front and the back. It's like I missed that chunk of hair right there. So we want to be able to see those little triangle ears that pop out like that. From there, since we set those two points, we can see like we scissored right here, see that? And then now everything that's above that imaginary circle, we're cutting off. And I'm going to put his little ear tip back. And I'm trying to create like Layers, like I don't want to sit there and just scissor in one spot. Like I'm creating like layers and texture in the head. It's the same here, like you can see right here, and then we have to like start connecting it there. Do you all get to do a lot of Westies in your salons? No? Westies? just got a gorgeous new one that came in oh, uh, yeah? about four days ago. So now we have, you see like how much more um, his hair is standing up a little bit more? You have more oomph there. And then from there, I'm gonna cut, trim the chin hair. Um, like I would like a lot more hair like right here. Like, a lot more hair fill right in here. Like, I would like it to be like this, round this way. Because you want to see it round this way, you want to see it round this way. Um, underneath the chin, you can go up, do like a diamond shape in the collex right here. Um, by trimming that away, it gets, gets rid of their double chin. So I already did that, I think it was a four blade earlier. So I'm gonna comb this down. <coughs> I'm just going to neaten this because I don't want to take too much off. I mean, whatever the owner wants. If the owner wants it gone, just... But I like to have a little bit more hair underneath here. Good boy. And from there... I'm going to comb this down and then I'm going to follow this like I, I actually would love more, a little more hair, so I'm just like gonna take off the long parts. And then I'm going to comb this side out. And you can see like this is where the short part, short part here, and you take that triangle off. And that will help create the circle on the side. taking 
making that triangle part off and around it. And that's going to create that layer look on the side because sometimes I see Westies, they just have like long hair and it hangs and it's like you need that hair actually be shorter to stand out. Okay, you can see like how it points out like that. there I'll like comb up and see if anything like hangs out. And even like if the dog has super long nose you can comb this forward and it'll help shorten the nose by taking this off. Anything that hangs in front of the nose. And lift that up. Create that circle in front. pushing the ears forward to see like what it looks like since it's like you need that fill back here to create that round circle so I'm pulling his ear forward now and like now I'm being picky and seeing like so I, so like the circle is up here right and the circle goes down this way and it's not like the circle goes up into the ear tip it's like the ear tips are separate from the circle. So right now it's like it looks almost like it's connected, but I would actually like that to be separate. I'm just being picky now on my, my own grooming. But since his head is a little shorter, there's this is what we can do for right now. And sometimes, like, if you don't have a mirror, what I like to do, I don't know if I'm online can see this, but I actually like to stand this way and look upside down. Tucker, <laughs> And that will give you a different perspective um, to see if things are lopsided. Because sometimes I'm, like, more, I leave one side, like, too long and this side too short. Yeah. So I tend to leave things too heavy. But now it's, like, it's standing out. It looks cute and happy. Um, and then the back of the head, right where I was telling you where that line is, I really like to separate that. I like to, like, this is what I especially do with the show ring, like where that lead is, I will cut like a quarter of an inch like line to like help separate that. So a little at a time, start separating that, that neck and head. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Thank you, Steve Shaker. What are you thinking? It's okay. Good boy. This will like help make the dog's neck look a lot longer. So I'm actually gonna spray his head up. This is what I do with my pet dogs. I actually used Chris Christensen's thick and thicker gel in its head when he was wet and I dried it in there. And it's like, it's a nice product because like the dog doesn't come back matted, but it's just enough to give him like a little oomph for the hair to be like messy on top. Yeah. And if the dog doesn't like clippers on the lips, I will take my straights and I'll put my finger right there so I can feel like if he's about to like lick. Yeah. And you just want to go slow. 
slow because if you go too fast and then like you can't feel them to like like and it's not like you don't want to give them like um, a Bichon lip but just the stuff that hangs right below the lip get those little frilly bits out you can like <laughs> you're missing the teeth <laughs> just to clean it up and show like that pigment on the bottom lip and it helps keep their front teeth nice and clean because all that stuff is like bacteria that like um, that goes in between their teeth Questions about the head at all so far? I have a question. Like yeah. When you do a show recipe, do you shave the tip or do you strip the tip of the ear? How do you so do that? So I like to strip it, but everybody else shaves it. Um, I like the more natural look because they have that natural fluff, like I said. The question was sorry, online. Um, do you strip the ear tip or do you shave the ear tip? And I like the strip, that's my personal preference, but everybody else I know um, use a clip, uses a clipper. Um, I've seen ones that are like Nikki, like bat wings. Um, I've seen ones that are like, uh, like with a 10 blade. So it's groomer's preference at the point, but um, if the dog has a nice small ear, you kind of want to show it off because like a big ear is not pretty, but <laughs> yeah, you know, all our Westies have like huge bat ears. Okay. So since the dog already has gel in the head, I'm going to go ahead and do some hairspray. Uh, I like to use a light hairspray called Flex for sure because um, it's super light. So this is a little bit more heavier than what I like to use, but it will like help get the dog's head up and. Um, It'll last for like a day, maybe two, just the owners really like it. And um, I have a little pick, like a wide tooth pick, and I'm gonna spray and just like set the hair where I want it. And then once I have it set, I'll, um, I'll scissor if anything sticks out, pick it out again, and then do another spray to hold the dog's head in place. Okay. Any questions online? I'm just going to go ahead and just like try to get it down to the root. And then from there, fluff it up. Once you fluff up the head, then you can see like how good of a job you did scissoring the circle. Usually it's like, oh, okay, I did a good job. I'm like, oh, I did a good job. Like that's, that's blank. And like this can go all forward. So it's almost like the back of the flower. You know, like how the flower is like, has that green part behind it. I don't know what it's called, you know. But like that and that's the green part and this is the flower and you like want to push this forward. So you can see that the triangle ear tip. Boy. Any questions online? 
Does that make sense? I know it's kind of kind of crazy, but it's like point A to point B. Cut that. Trim underneath the chin. 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 <laughs> I always say chim chin, so every time I say it with a ch, I always like chim chin. Um, and then from the chin, you want to get the points off here. You want this to be really layered and set upon each, upon each other, so it like creates that stacked, nice, round, westy head. Oh, these are so nice. <laughs> It's interesting because I feel like this ear is bigger than this ear. It is. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, not every dog has the same, like, um, symmetry on, on, on the ear tips. And ears. Look at those Bashans. I always feel like Bashans always have that weird, like, ear that goes like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's see if I can trim it down just a little bit. <laughs> Is there any questions online? And you can take this and like kind of pull it forward a little bit to give them a little bit more of a brow. So you can see, okay, so you can see the side, the eye here, and like, I would like a little bit more brow, but it's like a lot of the weight is like right here. Uh, you don't want a blended head, like it's nice and round. Um, yeah, so if we don't have any other questions, um, if you have any questions about the trim in general or anything like that, Give a second for online. Oh, sorry, sorry to see. What's up? Um, so for the muzzle, you are making like a circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually, like they get like three circles. They get a circle here, here, and then like the back circle. That's what you kind of aim for. It's like a kind of layered circle, but it's like all blended in. Um, but yeah, you want like a nice round circle. You want like. You almost like don't want to see their eyes in the show ring. You want to see a little bit of an almond shaped eye. But since they're pets, we can definitely open it up and give that like feeling of a show dog without like all that I'm sorry, with all that hair. But yeah, it's still round. You see it round, but it's not like perfectly scissored like a Bashan head, like super crisp. It gives you that kind of that blurred, like spanky kind of like look. Yeah. So there you go. If there's no other questions, I am done with him. Um, yeah. Do you ever hand strip like your pet, like grooming clients? Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of, um, I have a good amount of pet clients that hand strip. Um, I usually like really strip the jacket and then like I'll strip and scissor the head and skirts, but strip enough to give texture, but not like be like totally crazy about it. Like they get like, or blade here on the front lap and the back of the tail, the jacket is stripped. Um, and then I'll like strip the skirts just to give texture in the head, but there's a lot more scissoring involved. In comparison to a clipper trim, what's the time difference it takes you to do that to a pet? So um, a pet clipper trim um, start to finish is an hour. A uh, hand strip, it can be anywhere from hour half to two hours, depending on how frequent they come in. Uh, and um, the density of the coat too, because like some coats pull easier than others. Some are just like, oh my god, like I have one more cement. Part to this question. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you go back and start hand stripping on a dog that's already had clipper cutting done to it, or do you have to start it with hand stripping as a puppy? It's best to start as a puppy. It depends on the dog how they handle it, if they're altered or not, you know, spayed or neutered, their age. Um, it will never really look like the best or the same as you would start as a puppy, but you will get texture back. Um, sometimes when they're like spayed or neutered, they get a whole bunch of undercoat, and um, it's hard to make that coat lay nice and flat, but sometimes it takes like a year to get 
some good texture back into it. But with pets, like, if you have pets here, you can just, like, just pluck some hair out just to get some of that texture back, and it will, like, thicken the head up, especially if there's some sparse ones. And it will just, like, within a year, be like, oh, wow, we looked at the pictures before and after. In a year, be like, okay, I can see a difference. Like, the head's sticking up more. It has more thickness to it and everything like that. So, any other questions online? Anything about hand stripping or anything like that? I don't know we did pets today. But, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks again to our sponsors and Hugh Fresh for having us. We'll be back soon.
What's up, everybody? I'm back. This is Nikki, the Bichon. Um, we're into another head, a Bichon head. So, <laughs> sticking with our trend of round faces. <laughs> She's like, thanks. I love that. Nikki is my personal dog. She uh, showed for a long, long time. She's retired now. I just recently guard combed her body, so um, ignore her fun, cute little haircut she's got going on right now. <laughs> She's got like a horse mane back here, so it is what it is. We're gonna blend some of that in today because I did not when I curved her the other day. <laughs> so um, we're gonna cover, she's somewhere between like a show head and a pet head. Like we're like a really nice comfort in the middle um, as far as like coat length goes. I feel like Bichon heads are something the entire grooming world struggle with because all the Bichon heads you get are like this. Mm -hmm. um, so the shorter, the, like li less amount of hair that you have, the harder it is to make you blend those ears and get that circle. So even taking the body short, you can still leave like a big head without it being like super bobbly heady, which is why I wanted to um, go ahead and take her down to the guard comb before the class today. Cause she was, she was full. She had lots and lots of hair. So she's living her best naked life right now. <laughs> um, it's still pretty long. I mean, it's an O comb, so nothing crazy, but she was in like scissored length. So this is very short compared to what she's used to. Um, and we're going to blend all this in so we can talk about the head and the neck piece together. So I feel like that really goes hand, hand in hand with your pet bichons. Um, there's really only so many ways you can get this bichon head without getting your neck and stuff blended in. She's here for the class. You can grab a folder on the desk and come sit down. Um, so we have to pretty much do the neck and the head to accomplish both. I know people that have like collars that don't want to leave neck coat. You can blend that in like real tight, which I'm not going to blend it in that tight on her, but we're going to blend it in pretty tight. So we'll go ahead and get started. And I'm going to fluff her out. She's been waiting for her moment all day. <laughs> her brother had a time. He got to take pictures this morning and she was like, what about me? I was like, her time's coming. Save the best for last. <laughs> no, the other two are quiet dogs of mine and they're, they're fabulous. But I might be biased with my own dog. All right, so we're nice and fluffed out. I'm gonna go ahead and shave her um, neckline first. This is something that I just showed you all on our pet head, um, but we're also gonna do it on our Bichon head here. And this is crucial. I think you like have to do this. Like, I don't care what length the dog is, like you've got to take this V down. So I've got a five and I'm gonna do reverse. And I'm just stopping like, Almost like dog had Adam's apple. And I mean, you can literally do this on so many styles. Like every single doodle, if you leave them a little fluffier, like take that neck down. Because honestly, as far as pet grooming goes, like my motto is like the less hair that I can get on this dog and out the door, the better. Because the next time it comes in, it's going to take less time to dry, less time to brush. Of etc. So if I can get more hair off this dog and have it look proportionate, um, that's my goal as far as pet grooming as a whole. Now, thankfully for the Bichon breed, this is standard. So we're gonna start with that. And I want this. And this. You're high maintenance. We need lots of things. Um, so I'm gonna shave her eye corners. Now on Bichon's, you can actually shave their eyelashes, um, which I'll do, we can do it. I haven't done it on her in quite some time. She gets a touch irritated with it, but <laughs> like, she's fine. So I'm gonna do this with a 40. Now your pet Bichon's, they might not let you do this, um, but if they can at least let you shave out the corner of the eyes, that's great. Now for our actual like, 
literally shaving off our eyelashes. That's literally what I mean. I'm gonna pull this back and make sure this is really taut. And I'm gonna pat this on a 40. And I'm gonna ever so closely use the very end of that blade and take those eyelashes off. It's nerve wracking. I felt like it took me a bunch of tries before I was really comfortable doing it. However, you can see the difference in her eyes with how dark this eyes looks and how great her pigment is versus over here where I hadn't shaved it yet. It's really white. Now you're not gonna wanna do that on a dog that has like bad pigment. So if they aren't like black as like coal, then you really wouldn't want to expose that feature on the dog. Um, but she's got really great pigment and it has stuck around even as she gets older. So, you know, it's a good thing to show off. So we wanna make sure that um, we're showing off your good assets. We gotta, we gotta keep them around as you age, you know. Works with what your mama gave you. All right. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this side, and I'm gonna sit here. I'm sorry if I'm in your play, but there's like such a large margin of error. I've gotta be like really up close here. Next time you're all at your salon, pretend someone's having to watch you groom the entire time and try to groom from the side. It's a really <laughs> fun time. <laughs> we have a really great time up here. <laughs> okay. Alright. So we've got we've got those shaved real nice. So I'm gonna keep it on my 40 and just ever so slightly get the corners of these out. If we were doing show, I probably wouldn't go that short. Um, she's my personal pet, so I like to just get rid of the agunk and she gets eye scenes just like all the others. And I like to stay like right, right here. I don't want to cross over this, this nose bridge. I want to stay right here in the corner of this eye. And while I have this out, we're going to do 40 blade into her nose, just like we did earlier. Except this is a part of their group. And you can, I know she's mine, but she's not going to move on me. I say that, watch her be like. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to make sure I get those little ones under there. So we can get your, your hair out of your three teeth in there. Yeah. All right. So I would say that's like like a prep. Like we've just we got this area shaved. We've got our eyes. We've got our nose. So like now we can put clippers away and we're ready for like grooming our head. Gosh, you you are a maintenance. You require a lot of scissors. Okay. Come here. start with our visor and as Christy was talking about we're gonna kind of create layers here so we're gonna pull, pull this back like we have no hair then we're gonna we're just gonna bring one of these forward just the little spin up a little bit and I'm gonna take my curves and this first layer I want to try to keep my scissors like as parallel as I can, because we want to create this, this nice bubble. So each layer I pull forward, I'm going to twist my scissors and go around. Now this would be pretty much the exact same thing you want to do if you like to do your poodle top knots in layers, is pull it and then each, as you go each layer, you would be moving and rotating your scissors all the way around your head. So we're going to go just slightly past the corner of this eye, which she's got a little, like almost stopper from where you can tell where I stop every time I do it. Um, and we'll go across this side. And then we'll pull another layer forward. Now, Bashan's have kind of two looks as far as their visor goes. They have like the angry pointed visor that is like my favorite. And then they've got a more softer 
rounder, visor. Depending on who you ask, they're going to tell you both of them are right. They're both right. I, I mean, literally, it doesn't matter who you ask. They're going to say that one's right. They're going to say the other one's right. They'll argue both ways. A lot of people say the rounder one is like is more correct because they're supposed to be a really happy little fun circus go lucky dog. So you want a really nice happy look. You don't want this angry, aggressive looking thing. I think it's hilarious because they're so fluffy. And so like when I get this mean little evil eye thing, it literally makes me so happy. So <laughs> I tend to lean more towards pointed. Um, if you're ever wanting to compete with this breed, it's definitely wise to just ask your judge. Do they have a preference? Do they want it pointed? Do they want it rounded? They can tell you, you know, if they prefer or they might not say anything. So, in my opinion, it's preference. So, I kind of go back and forth. Um, some days I'll point it real hard and some days I will round it out a little bit more. So, you can have fun with it. Say so some days she likes to be more of a brat and other days she likes to be less of a brat. She's like, no, I'm, I'm always a brat. Is. But you're my brat. Her brother is like, yeah, she's a brat. She beats me up all the time. <laughs> all right. So I've brought this forward, and you can see where I stop at the same point going up. We have a little ledge. And this is going to be crucial. We want to keep all of this because this is what's going to hide our ear line. So on all your pets, and they have really, really short round heads, the most crucial part of their round head that you can keep is this hair between the ear and between the eye. This hair is going to hide your line. So um, the more of that you keep, the better. We're going to blend it in later. But as far as our visor right now, I'm stopping at the same point. So we are, we are creating like little like parallel lines on both sides of the eyes. Does that make sense for everyone? Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? Any online questions? All right, we're gonna keep on going. And I'm gonna pull one more layer. I like to stop once I reach about the middle of the head. So I'll keep pulling until I get about midway through. I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna block your view for a second, sorry. <laughs> So we've got somewhere between a nice rounded bowser and a nice pointed one. We went a little mild today. <laughs> She's like, I'll be, I'll be a pretty princess. Not the mean one. All right. So once I set my visor, I'm going to fluff out the whole head, like all of it. I want this as fluffed out as we can get it. Big Sean's are what shape? Yeah. <laughs> A plus. <laughs> we are going for round. Um, old school Bichons have that like, real bell head. We all remember those. Um, not anymore. We're not doing it. We're going <laughs> round. Circular. And if you're never sure about like if you're round enough, you're going to have several sections. Like Christy was saying, you have like a round muzzle, you have around here, you have around in the back. So Bichons are kind of similar. Um, except it's just like one circle that you want to have from every section that you look at. So we want to have one circle here. We want to have one circle here. If I point this down, we want to have one circle here. If I point this up, we want to have a circle right here. So we've got circles from all angles. That's the best ringtone I've ever heard. <laughs> so, once I fluff all that out, we need this loop back on you. I'm going to use this loop to help me um, hold her ears in the ear X position. Slide over here, sweetie. She's like, I'm so sick of my mom. Let's do this stuff. She turns 10 in November. My broken heart. <laughs> I'm gonna die when she turns 10. Like you're not allowed. You're not allowed to age. There was a reel that I saw the other day and it was like, if you could sell your partner to have your dog last forever, like would you? And the immediate was like, 
like, yes, like, take my ball. And I was like, sorry, Connor. Like, he's like, it's fine. She needs to live. He's like, great. I'm glad we're on the same page. So, so I'm going to make sure I have this up. She'll like to point her nose up, so I'm going to try my best to try and keep it down. Um, thankfully, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it, and then she's going to do it. But right now, she's keeping her mouth shut. Great. If she wants to start opening it, I'm going to have to play jungle and, like, keep try to hold her mouth shut and hold this loop. It's a lot of fun. So right now, she's keeping her mouth shut, which is great. So we're going to take advantage of that. I'm going to try and pull her ears up. The main reason you want that mouth shut at the same time is because it's going to change this shape that you're going here. It's going to separate. If I can get her to open her mouth. No. No. If it, it'll separate your, like, muzzle hair in the side. So your chin, if I can speak. So I'm gonna pull this up. At no point are we picking up the ears, are we doing anything with the ears besides just like making them stand up. Um, I'm never gonna do this. I don't wanna, we don't wanna know they're there. Just pretend they don't exist. We wanna know they're there so we don't actually like cut them, we don't get too close. Um, but our goal is to hide them and never speak of them again. Cause that's my favorite thing to do and I wish we could do it on all pets. So, I'm going to pull this up and I'll come to the other side so everyone can see what we'll do both sides. But I'm going to start from right behind our ear and I'm going to make a nice little, like if I start at the middle part of this, we're going to make like a full C to the front of our nose. Now, I will say, I take her chin real short because that's my personal preference. At this point of my life, she's my pet, we don't compete anymore, we'll do little shows. Um, however, it, is sh it should be much longer. Your nose should be the center of your circle. So you want equal amount of hair up here as you go on down here. I don't like it. It's my dog. So that's why it's not there. But if you're trying to go for more correct, we definitely need more hair down here. Um, I will say this works great for all your pet beach dogs because no, on my opinion, no one needs all that hair down here. It's nonsense. I get rid of it. Um, but sometimes if you're struggling to make that circle shape, that could be why you might be taking your chin too short because it does cause me to struggle trying to make her ears taper in because I have her chin so short mm -hmm. compared to like what it should be. So we definitely want to go for more of an even balance on that question. Yeah. Do you cut some hair underneath her ears to have her ears lay? No. So that's a good question. Not? I'll repeat it for live. Do I cut any hair underneath the ears so that they lay? You don't want to pick it up. I don't want to trim any of this. Wherever it sits, it's where it's going to sit. I want to leave them. I don't want to cut anything under it. And actually, if you cut like a lot of this underneath, it's going to cause it to be way too flat. And then you're going to struggle needing hair like on the sides, and you'll like never have enough like ear hair to make a circle, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So we want to pretty much the only time we're ever going to touch the ear is to do this right here, like pull it forward and grab this coat right behind there and just like cut off a little side back ear coat. But it's still, I'm not picking the ear up or doing any kind of trimming underneath the ear. Um, that's going to be the only time we ever acknowledge the ear's existence <laughs> because we want to hide it for as long as we can. And on our pets with our shorter heads, it gets harder and harder and harder. So that's where this hair between the eyes, which I might have mentioned before you walked in, was um, comes in handy because this hair between your eye and your ear is going to help hide the line from your ear. So you can see there's a big piece of hair right there. So I'm going to continue with my shape going this way. Can you not point your nose to the sky? <laughs> I told you all she was right. She, just because she knows what I'm saying. She's like, oh, I'm the princess. This this is my salon, so mm. I will do what I want. So Sam, I'm going to kind of pull this ear up. You can see what I pull out from behind here. <laughs> and we can trim this out. And I can blend that in just a little bit because it's cool. Who groomed you last? It was me. I'm the problem. Okay. <laughs> so, on pet do you still leave a little bit of a crest? I do. 
because I, it's impossible to, to blend in your head like with nothing here. Now I mean, I'm gonna take a decent amount of this crest off um, and I will still be leaving more on here than what I would say you would leave for a pet. Um, a pet crest is just gonna be matted. I mean, they wear a collar all the time. So you can taper it in tighter and I'll explain that as I blend all this in. No, you're good. We're gonna blend in all of our crest into the back of our head. Because in my opinion, it's it's one piece. Like you have to have the crest with the head. You can't start from the occiput and go back. You're gonna lose your entire roundness. Because remember, we want to be round here. We want to be round here. We want to be round from the side. We want to be round from underneath. So if we take this from the occiput back, we're not round up here anymore. So we've got to keep some of it. So I'm gonna pull my, Little C here. <laughs> and then I'll pull her her ears up again and just make sure I'm really nice and even. One thing you always want to make sure you grab, which I just came all out, is once you've shaved this area, you can pull all this down, and there's like a nice little like blob of hair under here for you. That almost like mirrors this section, but a little smaller. So once we've got our sides set, and doing our sides pretty much set our underneath for us, but like I said, we should have more under our under our chin. Um, it just gets gross, and I don't like it. Mm -hmm. So I take it off. But it does make my job harder. I have to really try and like hard taper this, which is a struggle sometimes, and will cause her ears to be visible because I've taken her chin so tight. So on your pets, that's really handy because typically you only got like this much hair anyway to make your circle. So you can really hard taper like right here, which is where we're gonna go next. You got hair in your eyeball. Taper. Right. Can you tell she's like me wrapped around her whole finger ball, whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna use my brand new Akira 50 Curve. Shout out to Fresh, these dropped today. Everyone here in class has one in their goodie bag, so I love these, super excited. They're so buttery smooth. We were playing with them earlier, and I was like, oh, I have a shorn head to do today. <laughs> now I'm pumped. So you can see the little almost curve that I took off there. We had like a corner at the top. And I'm pretending that ear does not exist to me. I am know it's there, we're ignoring it. But I do want to check and make sure when if I lift our ears up, we still don't see an ear. So you have to go really back and forth between kind of having it a little more natural. When her when their ear set is more natural, your circle is gonna look more a little footballish. Like just a touch. Not a whole lot. Just a touch. And when their ears are more natural, when they have them direct you got your circle back. So be aware of that. If you have, if you know their ears are relaxed and you're seeing more like football-y, and so you go to take that corner off, promise you don't do it. I've done it a lot. Don't do it. You're gonna ruin your circle. It'll be gone when they go like this. You're gonna have a little divot. You'll hate yourself for like a month till it grows back in. So make sure you're kind of got two shapes you're going back and forth between. And it's little hairs like that that you'll take off on a pet you won't get that circle again it, it's gone and it might take two appointments before you finally get that back so be aware you kind of you're going for two shapes almost depending on if we've got erect ears or if we've got more relaxed ears which right now she's not participating with either too well but do you want to do you want to be pretty for the class no okay I want Pat be Sean's not sit there like Nikki. 
<laughs> and I'm gonna come through. You can see we've got a little little ridge that's from our ear. And I'm gonna make sure that I pull her ears forward using my loop. And I'm gonna take these new thinners and just try to blend that off, rounding it into the side here. Now if her ears are erect, so we are going for a circle. If I drop this, it is a little bit, I don't wanna still go circle, almost thinking football. We gotta change our shape just a touch or else you're gonna pinch your ear, which I'm notorious for doing. So that's been like my biggest tip. I've never really heard anybody kind of call it that or say the difference between that like you might have two shapes. Um, it's just something that I've noticed, I feel like. I do a lot of pet bichons. Like, I don't know where they keep coming from, but I keep getting them. <laughs> Probably because I own some. And I made that my logo, so they just come out of nowhere. <laughs> um, so I have a lot of them. And it's just something I've noticed over time is you kind of get two shapes. And it's worked as I continue to do it, so I'm going to keep doing it until it doesn't work. So we're gonna kind of go for this side now. Same thing. I'm gonna make sure our ears are up. Kudos to Christy for making, I know she said it wasn't a circle, but I'm gonna keep calling it a circle. When you can't stand in the front of the dog. <laughs> probably have them and don't realize it that they do have this much coat you might just be taking it off in the wrong areas and it's not giving you that circle so I've left this kind of very top for last so I've kind of got my my size <laughs> put your nose down <laughs> he's like absolutely not do you want a cookie She's like, I know you don't have one, so suck it. <laughs> You're lucky I love you to death. It's like your child back talking to you. That's what's happening right now. I don't know if anyone can relate, but I can't, but I am right now. I don't have a child, but she is giving me full back talk, so it's okay. All right, so I'm going to use these same um, blenders, thinners, the new Kara 50 curve, and take off this little low ridge on the top here. Now, I haven't groomed anything past the off, off, off the foot. I've only groomed right here in the front. So I'm not going to mess with anything back there yet. That entire piece I would consider is all crest, just about like that from there back is all part of the crest. So we're still focused on our face right now. So anything from behind this loop, I'm not touching right now. We're going to just kind of give this a nice soft circle. And if you're ever sure, if I move this, am I out of focus? Um, like I said, we're making a circle this way, we're making a circle this way, we're making a circle kind of over here, we're making a circle from the side, we're making a circle from this side, So, if you're unsure with the top, I always try to get above the dog. Now, I do think Bichon heads are something you have to scissor. Um, I've just never accomplished anything pretty with a guard comb. I don't even care what length it is. Now see, if I'm standing right here, I see hair out of my circle right here, which I can't see from like right here, but being above the dog, I see it 
this is still a circle and including it includes the nose so it's like the nose makes a circle from the occiput so I have hair right here so you always want to like make sure you're looking in all kinds of different positions like when Christy was upside down earlier same thing <laughs> Which, if it's on that side, I'm sure it's on the other side too. Oh, I can't see. There it is. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. All right. So we're also gonna fold, pull this forward because we want a nice circle here. So. see the difference in the way that fans out for us. Now, when I do that, this is a bit short because my chin is short. So the links up here where you have in other places do affect Hair adjacent to. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you're taking one area too short, you're gonna have to take another area too short to make everything match. Like you're never gonna get pieces to make a circle if you're not um, getting them their same length around. So this is definitely shorter for like muzzle than you want for like show or anything like that. Great for pet. We're just trying to get around head, right? But that is due to my chin being very short. It has grown out a lot for this class. <laughs> I like it very, very, very short. Like I will shave it before um, and take it all the way off. And I have a kind of beach on head on the top when I don't have to use her for anything. I just think it's so cute. She's, it's like beach on meets Asian fusion meets beach on again. All right. So I'm gonna check my circle from back here. I'm gonna fan everything out. Any questions so far? in person or live? No? Yes, we're going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You'd be out in the middle and I'd be like, oh, should I ask that? Yeah. <laughs> You almost like people will be like, oh, I bought that angel eye stuff. I bought this. You sprinkle it on their food. I'm like, that doesn't. You can <laughs> doesn't do a whole lot. Um, but you've got to try to treat it from the inside out, in my opinion. Um, and I mean, changing their diet to where they're not on kibble that has dyes in it is a big thing that can help. Trying to get those things across to pet owners is <coughs> difficult, as we know. Um, but those are the key points that I try to hit as far as keeping a white dog white are going to be just giving them better food, better water, um, going to the groomer more often. <laughs> yes. Do you ever recommend probiotics for that? You know, I've been asked that before, um, and I, I haven't ever really recommended it just because I've personally never done it. So I don't ever like to, you know, I'm not going to be like, oh, this works if I've never actually seen it work. I've heard really great things about it. Um, I think I pretty much stuff like blueberries in exchange for like probiotics, I feel like. A, she loves them. <laughs> and B, where I freeze them, they make a really nice like treat in their food, kind of helps clean their teeth at the same time, and they last really long in the freezer. Um, 
And I've noticed it does help the eye health, so I feel like it kind of is two birds, one stone situation. I would like to try some probiotics in the future. I just haven't. But I have heard really great things about that helping. There's also like food out there for white dogs. White is no pigment, like color without pigment. So um, lack of pigment. So they do operate a little differently. You know, like they'll tell you and you put a beach on there, <coughs> probably a Westie too, I don't know. It's like dogs they only come in white and they don't tolerate like the anesthesia as well. Um, I don't even chime in on that. But <laughs> she's like, nope. But I've heard it. I'm not a vet, but I've heard that it is like they do process differently for their dog without color. So take that out what you will. Um, we got to keep grooming you. We're not done. Okay. So I'm going to move on to our crest. So I'm going to take this off. Lift you around. I gave it like a little horse mane because I thought it was fun and now I'm like, why did I do that? Okay, I'm gonna like chomp a bunch of this off. So I've just got my curves on backwards. On backwards. I've got them flipped in my hand because these are flip handles. So you can easily flip them around. My favorite style. Now, if you can convince your pet owners to not wear like a collar 24-7, I feel like this is a really great stopping point for your crest, which is like just a touch behind your shoulders. Um, I feel like that would be pretty much equivalent to like where it's going to be if you have like your show version. There's just like lots more hair. Um, now, if you can't convince them to do that, if you're noticing that it's coming back matted, chop that sucker off like right here and you're gonna hit it right at about your withers. Your withers are your shoulders, so you're gonna hit it right here, and you're just gonna have to hard taper that circle. So you would be stopping your crest right here, so that way you have the back of your circle. So when you look at your circle this way, you still have a whole circle, you're not missing, you don't have like that, um, but you don't have a quote unquote like large crest, so you'd be stopping right here. Does that make sense? Everybody see that line? And then you just blend, 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 blend. And it really, really does look like a dead circle when you do that because then you really, really just have a circle. Whereas right now we've got our circle, but you can see we have a, we have a nice little flow to our crest. So I'm gonna pop that up. And I learned this really fun thing with Bichon. So you can tilt their head back and make a straight line. So see this little like pudge right here? We're gonna get rid of that. So for our crest, you just let their head all the way to the sky, which she doesn't want to do right now. <laughs> <laughs> then when you tilt it back up, it gives you a really pretty line. Mm -hmm. And it you want because you don't want, you want your highest like most hair to be right here. So a lot of people leave way too much hair right here. I even did it myself, and then someone was like, "Do this," and it showed you that little like pudge line. Mm -hmm. You chop it off, and it gives you like a really pretty line going up through there. So if you can convince your pet beach on people to leave the collar off. This really isn't tons of hair. It's definitely doable if they'll just listen to your recommendations. Um, sometimes it's easier, like I have one, so I'm like, look, if you want this, we can do it. Like, but we gotta do this to get to that point. And when I find myself trying to create this ledge, I'm like, don't do that. I tilt my head back again and find the little like line that sticks out. Oh, I need another arm. Okay. We have a question online. Yes. Uh, would you recommend using a thinner also to blend it in after doing the face? Um, you very well can, if, especially if 
you aren't as comfortable or confident with your curves, um, more than welcome to. I like my curves it's a little faster for me. Um, and she's very still tolerable of it. You could definitely come in here. Yours just gonna take you longer where this, you know, doesn't cut as much hair off. Um, but yeah, you you very much can. Where we are a curly coated breed, you're not gonna have like a hard line in where you might on your other breeds where you would want to use a, a blender. We have another one too. Yes. Um, are the bottom, they said they may have missed this big but are the bottom of the ears taken all the way up to the leather and blended around? That's a really good question. Um, yes and no. It's going to depend on your dog. If your beach on there grooming has like really weirdly long ears, then yeah, you might have to, it might be all the way up to the leather as much as it can. If you have a really short beach on head, it might be all the way up to the leather as best as it can. If you don't really have either of those. If you just kind of have like an average beach on, you're going to kind of ignore it. We want to pretend the ears aren't there. So you're not going to ever pick the ear up and be like, let me take this to the leather. We want to leave it where it sits, find our circle with our ears up. And you can even, you know, put your hand right back here because that's going to really make those stand up because you weren't holding them that far a minute ago. <laughs> so, Yes and no, really good question. It's gonna depend on several factors. How much coat you have, the dog's anatomy. Those are by the main factors. <laughs> so to blend in the side of this, when I took her body, I like stopped her guard comb right about here. And then I have scissored in this. So I've got quite a bit of thickness on the side here that we can just blend down. I've just got curves and I just wanna blend this in real nicely so it doesn't look like she's got a thick old neck or anything. Um, now a Bichon crest and a Poodle crest is not gonna be the same. Your Poodle crest is gonna be tighter. Your Bichon crest is gonna be wider. You don't wanna pinch it too much. They do have a more, they're more of a substantial dog. They are cobby, that's what the Dictionary thing says, dictionary thing, the AKC breed standard. standard, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. That's what the breed standard says. Is there a copy dog? Your poodles are very more defined, more elegant, so they're a little bit more tighter, refined. Um, so we're, we want a somewhere like happy medium where we want a crest, but we don't want to pinch it too much because I've done that too. Looks not good, not good. We got a big old head and then you got a bitty 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 crest. <laughs> don't do it. Not a good look. Take my word. Really good questions. Any other ones? Well, I'm kind of blending the sides here. How long do you think it really took you to perfect doing the Bichon cut? Um, I mean, I would say I felt really, 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 really confident, confident about it, like last year. But I think there's always things you continue to learn. The breed standard continues to change for every single breed. Um, so I mean, I definitely. Think you have to continue your education. I watch and take any Bichon class that's out there. I just took some last year at the VFCA, the Bichon Nationals. Um, absolutely love it. And that's when I learned the little trick about, you know, tilting the head back. And it just was something that like I already knew how it should look, but it was something that helped me achieve it easier. Um, but that's a really good question. I think you never stop learning on any breed ever. But I do think you get really, really, really confident in your trend at least. So um, I do feel happy and confident with my push on groom, but definitely always stuff to learn. I sit in those chairs just like you all. Any other questions? And you can see I'm like really trying to look at the top to make sure this matches. And you can use your comb as a like measuring tool to see if you've got like the same amount of coat on both sides. So you can kind of see how much coat and like where it hits on your comb. So kind of use that to measure um, as you're going if you're ever like curious if something's even. Cool. I can do this all day long, so. <laughs> you wanna turn around?
if y'all got any more questions. <laughs> and I'm pretty happy with where we're where we're sitting. No? <laughs> Online? Um it's asking, um, do you fluff dry the whole dog or velocity dry? <clears throat> no one likes my answer with this. <sighs> I will force dry, and I hate a fluff dryer, like an actual stand dryer. Dry, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not good at using them, so I will just use a handheld dryer and fluff dry like with a handheld hair dryer. Ooh. Don't like sand dryers though. I just can't function them. So that's a me thing, but if you like, if you like sand dryers, great, I'm jealous. Um, I can't function, so I do it hard old school way, and I will hold a hair dryer and brush and fluff this out. I would say force dry to like probably 90%, and then I'm fluffing my like last 10% with like a heated handheld dryer, and I will do that for every single client dog I own, um, like that I groom on the planet. I don't care what breed they are, like a Chihuahua, I'm finishing them off with my handheld hair dryer. It's stupid, I know, but I literally can't not do it. Um, I really do think it makes a big difference in your groom, getting that heat to pull that hair really perfectly straight. Um, will help impact your grooms. Pulling them straight from a cage dryer and then going straight to grooming, are you're gonna know. Like you can compare pictures back and forth and go be like, okay, was this re-fluff dried or was this straight from the, like a cage dryer or just force dried? You can physically see a difference even after a haircut. Mm -hmm. So I definitely, definitely, definitely think everybody needs a handheld hair dryer and fluffing them before you start the haircut. It takes five minutes. To just fluff them out and then when you do it the right way and you do that um, it will help you groom them faster you're not having to comb through so much you don't have any curly hairs in your way that just aren't sitting right because you took the time to fluff dry them so you're like oh i don't have time to do that i promise you it's going to save you you're going to spend five minutes doing it it's going to save you 10 minutes on your haircut so you're gonna you're gonna save it in the end i promise so really 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 great question i have another question yes so I've been nerding out on your videos a little bit. Okay. <laughs> and I've seen you use two different handheld dryers. I've seen you use the Dyson Ultrasonic, and I saw you use another, I don't know what brand it was, but what is your favorite hair dryer to use when fluffing your dogs? And do you notice a difference with the Dyson between a regular dryer? Yeah, those are really good questions. I love my Dyson dryer. Um, it just recently broke on me, so that's probably why you've seen me use a regular, <laughs> a regular handheld dryer. Okay. Made me go out with um, a Dyson dryer. So, I, I bought the warranty on it. I think it's just because the amount of dog hair that like <laughs> continues to get into the filter. And I mean, I cleaned that sucker, but it's not wanting to work for me now. So it like seems to get overheated and then it'll cut off. So um, I do prefer my Dyson handheld dryer over my regular dryer. It's so much quieter. So if anything, it's not like a me preference, like the dogs really behave well to it, especially if you have a dog that's really bad for drying of the face or something like that where they just are noise sensitive that dryer is so quiet so quiet it's so much more powerful than a regular handheld dryer so hands down love my dyson i miss it dearly i gotta get it fixed um but if you don't have one they're very expensive i understand not showing off the money for it a regular dryer you can buy at the pharmacy will definitely get the job done as long as it's got heat to it. And I feel like, you know, you're going to be moving it around. You're like, oh, heat, you're going to burn the dog. Unless you're incompetent, man. Like, just keep it moving. You're just like drying your own hair. Keep it moving. And I'll stop. I'll turn it off. And then I'll brush. I'll brush that hair straight out. Grab the hair dryer. Keep it moving. Stop. Then I'll brush. I kind of go back and forth. So. Under, yeah, put it under your neck. Yeah, put it in your shoulder. <laughs> blow. And I always try to keep my hands where the air is coming from. So I know if it's getting too hot. Um, you don't have to turn it on full heat. You know, be mindful. So, yeah, really great questions. Any online questions? No? No more. Sweet. I know we've got some giveaways. Um, online people, make sure you comment in the chat and just say hi, what's up, hello, goodbye. Um, that way are entered in for our online giveaways. In-person people, you, we've got giveaways here for you, so we're gonna do that. Um, anything I'm missing? Just a thank you. Yeah, just a thank you. Everybody, thank you so much. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you, Christy. Come up here. <laughs> Don't leave me hanging. <laughs> These people are tired of seeing me. <laughs> thank you, guys. Um, I had a really great time.
Thanks, Tucker. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Tucker. <laughs> thanks, Tucker. Yeah, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. We had a good time. I always love um, just getting to share something that I equally love. It's yeah. definitely a really fun time getting to hang out with you guys, talk about dogs, and tools, yeah. equipment. So, yeah. I would love to hear you guys' feedback on the new curves, too, because yes. I've been waiting for you forever, and I'm so excited for them. Yes, this one. Akira 50 Curve. And this playback is available for, like, ever on, <laughs> on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. So everyone can view this until YouTube doesn't exist. So make sure you all play that back if you've got any, like, questions. Of course, you can always DM us mm -hmm. um, on Instagram. Instagram. Mine's AB Sebastian Groomer. Mine's Christy Hendrickson. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's on it's on our socks. There you yeah. go. <laughs> Thank you. Can't spell it. I've got fun names. But um yeah, yeah always free to DM us. Always DM us if you've got any questions. Yeah, don't be shy. Yeah. Always happy to help. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. She said I want a white dog. dog party. Oh, he's uh. handsome. <laughs> yeah, no, he's never looked so pretty. Okay, so the giveaways. Yes. Yep. Chrissy's like, we're done talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.